Hey everybody, welcome to the 20 Minute Bible Study. I am Vince Miller and today we're discussing situational engagement as a father. You know, becoming a father is one of the greatest adventures we have in life. When we take on the name father, our identity and title changes forever. Some of us are thrust into it and still others of us planned it either way. It's absolutely an adventure. Even throughout scripture, we see many different types of fathers and the positive or negative wake they leave behind. On the negative side, we see abusive fathers and absent fathers and abandoned fathers. And on the positive side, we see appointed fathers and adventurous fathers and audacious stepfathers. Regardless of the type of earthly father we have, we feel his wake and our children will experience ours as well. But the question remains, how can we be the best father to the children that God has given us to steward? Here are what I'm calling three keys to being a strategic father. First, we got to remember each child is individually different. You know, every kid in your home is going to be different and needs different kind of love and coaching and directing and challenging. You know, some kids need to be pushed. Some need to be loved. Some need to be disciplined. Yes, my wife and I had one that we disciplined way more than others. Maybe you were that kid too. Regardless, you know, God creates each one different and yet still in his image. And these young image bearers, therefore, are going to have different personalities and gifts and talents and temperaments and styles and relationships through life. You're going to want each one of your children to act the same and grow the same and mature the same and believe the same. But guess what? They won't. And often we fail to remember this, thus our expectations of them are unrealistic, which adds undue pressure for them and for you. So remembering this first principle is very important. Each child is different. Second, each child is situationally different. You know, from one child to the next, your kids are going to act differently. Some of your children will learn faster and others slower. Some will be ultra responsible and some won't. Some will be orderly and others a little messy. Some will be smarter and others, well, not so much. And some will have physical ability and others will be maybe a little bit klutzy. We must also prepare for this. It can be a little irritating when you realize you must expand your parenting methodology simply because kids are situationally different. And third, and very importantly, each child needs a strategic approach because of one and two. You know, as fathers, in the end, our goal is to move our children from dependence or toward independence. Or maybe it's better said that we need to move them from dependence on their earthly father to interdependence on their heavenly father. Keeping this in mind, we need to embrace a strategy that supports this kind of process. But we also need one that incorporates individual and situational differences. So here's a thought that might help. Consider your role and engagement with each child and situation through the lens of one of four roles that you will play, director, coach, supporter, and observer. Again, that's director, coach, supporter, and observer. You know, every situation and child at some point will need one of these four fathering approaches. These correspond to different involvement levels that we're gonna have from being very involved to less involved or completely unengaged. First, a father who's a director is one who tells it like it is. Second, a father who coaches is someone who teaches, observes, and redirects. Third, a father who is a supporter is verbally present, but circumstantially unengaged. And fourth is the observer, a father who's more like a cheerleader in the stands and is mostly unengaged, viewing his child from afar. You know, each type of father is required at different moments and different times with the goal of really moving them from dependence to independence to interdependence on God. So when we return, we'll be joined by a very special guest and a good friend who will help us to dig into this topic a little bit more. Get your day started right. 
Sign up for the Men's Daily Devotional at mensdevo.org. That's mensdevo.org. They're short, sweet, and to the point. Read them and share them with the men you know. And get into God's Word daily. Well, hey guys, welcome back to the 20-Minute Bible Study. I'm joined again today by Tyler Van Epps. Thanks for being with us. Excited to be here. Yeah, I know. Um, we're we're kind of continuing uh, to talk about fathering, you know, and uh, I think it's really important probably to spend a few episodes talking about it because uh, it's not easy, right? <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. It, it kinda, <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. Uh, I don't want to feel like a complete failure, and I know that there's some <laughs> days I do feel like a failure. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. I mean, I, I have had many moments uh, during the lifetime of being a father where I felt like a complete failure. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you had one of those moments? Never. Never. Not, okay, not so you're perfect. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just wait, you'll have them. <laughs> and I know your kids are younger, like six to what, four months? Four months, yeah. Four months, so six six years to four months. And so you got a lot of moving pieces, four kids moving mm-hmm. all over the place and a pair of twins, mm-hmm. right? A, yeah. Or a pair of twins. Is yeah. that the right way to say two, it? Two, two kids. Two kids uh, that happen to look the same. Okay. <laughs> that's, so, a, that's a good description. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you have you have four kids in your house. And, uh, you know, it's it, fathering can be complicated, right? I, I think that I've encountered many fathers many times that just want to throw their arms up in the air. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, because they don't know what to do. Have you had one of those moments? Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I think... Mean, so recently, uh, my oldest daughter uh, rescued a little duckling. Oh, and by hand. By hand. Yep. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, so we brought this little duckling into our house, which okay. uh, I mean, it's it's kind of funny. Don't just, tell the DNR. It's <laughs> it represents I think the situations that just kind of come into your life, whether yeah. it's new school, this happens, this happens. You have situations, and everyone responds to it yeah. differently. Yeah. All your kids have an opinion on it. All your kids have needs around it, requests around it. Um, and that, you know, that just happens throughout the day, throughout the week. I think for me, the times I get overwhelmed is when I've got messages coming at me from all of them. I mean, even the four month old can be crying, you know, very few needs at this point, you know, poopy diaper, you know, Mm -hmm. food and sleep, but still it's sending a message to me. That's usually very loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And, uh, I think that's more often than not what makes, uh, fathering overwhelming and complicated Mm -hmm. is you just got all these kids, different personalities, different needs, all responding to the, what what looks like the same situation in different ways. And yeah. you're sitting here just trying to, you know, be the supercomputer processing all this information and, you know, trying to spit back solutions. And mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it breaks down more often than you, you'd like uh, it to. Absolutely. And then there's the complicated factor when you and your spouse don't don't agree right, right. on how to handle yeah. those sticky situations. Like, what do we do with the duck? You yeah. Know, well, you got Windows and you, Mac You, you can either care for it or you can cook it. I mean, you have one or the I other do not choice. Recommend that the, which one? The care for it or yeah. cook it? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is true, isn't it? Because each, like we said at the top of the podcast, you know, each kid is different and yeah. each situation is different. And then you throw multiple children into the equation with two different parenting styles, right? Mm-hmm. It becomes very complicated. And I yeah. know many men that will throw their arms up in the air. And of course, we're not advocating that you do that, yeah. right? But you have to engage with it and you have to figure out how to situationally bother with this. Mm-hmm. You know, so so one of the things that I suggested today, clearly in the podcast, was to try to figure out how to how to tackle these moments, right, with these different kinds of styles, right. Yeah. So we have this strategic fathering approach that's needed yeah. when you have individual kids in differing situations, and we talk about director Mm -hmm. and coach and supporter and observer. And each one of these is a different way that we engage with the situation, right? The director's the kind that takes control of the moment, directs it, tells it what to do. Mm -hmm. The coach is the kind who gives it direction and allows people to kind of perform and then redirects. The supporter's the one who's verbally engaged but situationally unengaged. And Mm -hmm. then finally, the observer is kind of the cheerleader in the stand saying, Way to go! Proud of you. You know, here's the way I would have done it. But you know, hey, yeah. go for it. Yeah. You're just observing, <laughs> right? And of course, in parenting as a father, what we're wanting to do is to move from director to really an observer, yeah. because we're wanting to push our kids towards independence or interdependence mm-hmm. on God. And we got to be thinking about that all the time. That's why I say it's got to be strategic, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think this is where fathering gets complicated. 
Does it not? Yeah. It's because we're playing all these four roles all the time. Right. Sometimes moment to moment. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they compete with our spouse. Sometimes you're turning to one kid being the director and the other kid being the supporter. Right. And they're right next to each other. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and I got to tell you, this... While we want to throw up our hands in these situations and kind of cave and give in, mm -hmm. we've got to be in these situations. And, you know, as I say, we got to be all in with them. And really for us to engage, we've got to be thoughtful. Yeah. Right. And I got to tell you, there's many moments I don't handle these moments well or mm -hmm. the roles that I should play. Mm -hmm. I'm probably directing. At times I should be coaching or supporting. Yeah. And I blow it. You know, and or maybe sometimes I'm observing too much when really I need to be giving some direction. Yeah. Because I'm just I'm tired, I'm disengaged, I don't have the emotional energy or strength. And this is true for both men and women in a relationship mm. with their kids. Um man, does that sound complicated to you? It, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds even more difficult than work, it, doesn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. It is because at least at work we can say, "Here's how we want things done," right? And then people maybe do that. There's a high chance that they at do. At the end them. of the day, you can yeah. ask for a paycheck. Yeah, 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 or you can fire them. But at home, you can't really fire these things because they continue to live with you, right? right. You continue to live. Right. So we have to engage with it, and it makes fathering very, very complicated. I think so. You know, the, the question then becomes: Is how does that make you feel? Like, I mean, can you imagine feeling like this on a daily basis? I mean. There are so many fathers out there that I, I feel, especially in the middle of active parenting, that feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. by this. And there are so many fathers I've met after the fact that kind of look back on it and just kind of smile. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they either they remember those days and they don't want to relive them or they remember <laughs> them and they're kind of like, yep, you're stuck in this situation. And yeah. it's dumbfounding, isn't yeah. it? I mean, what what are you thinking about when you encounter one of these situations? Be honest with the guys. Like, what what are you how do you what are you thinking about? Yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's a lot of times it, it is so easy to just defer yeah. decision making or influence until a later time. You just you feel like you're out of control in a situation. You're just like, let's get to the next situation. Yeah, let's and go so, somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing. Like you say, you know, throwing your hands up. I think, um, you know, it's it can be easy to fall into that observer role and just be like, I'm just going to let things happen. I'm going to let things play out. And, you know, sometimes that's actually okay. I mean, I, I tend to fall on the other side where I will over direct you a will. situation where I'm like, all right, things are... Things are getting out of control here, which means they're getting out of control here. So I'm going to, I'm going to fight for control. And yeah. that's usually, that never works well with yeah. my kids. They can, they can sense that. I think they can sense that urgency or, you know, probably borderline panic yeah. <laughs> just coming through with my, my emotions. And that, that typically kind of just breaks down the, the relationships in that moment. Yeah. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I feel a lot. Well, I, and I'm on the opposite end. So I'm, I'm less engaged when I find I hit these complicated moments and I feel like I'm damned if I do, I'm damned if I don't. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like you have those moments where you're like perplexed as to how to engage, Yeah. right? You're like, even if you understand these roles, you kind of go, I'm gonna lose here, I'm gonna lose there. And so you just kind of, <laughs> you disengage from the whole thing. Yeah. But I, I think this word, from Ephesians 6, 4 is really good. So I'm going to read it to you because I think it encapsulates how we should respond. It says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but mm -hmm. bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I, I love those words because uh, whether it be for me who might want to run away from the issues and abdicate or for you, if you want to over-engage and direct and tell and command, uh, even if we get our role wrong in that moment, regardless of the situation and the kid, what we have to remember is not to exasperate or to provoke them. Right. Like what we're trying to do is to engage in such a way that helps to draw the best out of them. And yeah. I love this word here. Do not provoke your children to anger, mm -hmm. but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And I think that suggests that there is a way to do it that's right, regardless of who the kid is or the situation, regardless of the role you may need to play at the moment, just don't agitate them. 
and provoke them mm. because then they are unable to see God through us. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And it's that sensitivity to allowing them to see God through us. Uh, ha have you ever had a really great moment though, where you really felt like, man, either you acted really well as a father, you could see that it really drew something out great out of your kids. Hmm. Ever had one of those moments? Yeah, I've, I've had a couple. One actually jumps out this morning. Um, our, our twins were at the breakfast table, which I'll, I'll talk yeah. about breakfast a lot. It's yeah. chaos in our home. Um, but they're just, they're yelling back and forth at each other. You know, they just, they get in these weird little fights where she looked at me wrong. She yeah, said this, right. she would have, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I think for, you know, one of the few times, typically it's the stop, just, you know, very, very commanding. Yeah, directing. Very, You're very, directing. Yeah, yeah, loud. Um, I think it was very applying the coach kind of role to that, came up, touched both of them on the shoulder, direct eye contact with each of them. Uh -huh. They got to see me interacting as a coach with the other one and then turn that back towards the, the other one and it like just diffused the situation. Hmm. And I, I, like, I walked away from that, I'm like, Man, man, that was good. That was bro. a lot more successful than standing in the other room and yelling at them to be quiet and leave each other alone. I'm like, yeah. hey, I'm going to try this coaching thing more yeah. often. Yeah, well, and that, good for you. I mean, good for you. Felt like a win. Because we need, I mean, seriously, we guys, we need wins once in a while mm -hmm. like that where you feel like strong about mm -hmm. who we are. And we don't have many of those as fathers. Uh, you know, we, we get to celebrate Mother's and Father's Day. Yeah. I get that and all. But mm -hmm. sometimes our kids, don't realize how difficult it is. You know, I've, I've had many failing moments, I would say, with my children on how I've interacted with them or things that I've said. But even when I do something right, I don't feel like they're quick to say, thanks for how you handled that. You know, and it can be <laughs> very unrewarding. And so you don't know what's working. But every once in a while, we have these, these moments. They're very mm. powerful, don't yeah. they? They leave us feeling like, you know, I got a different result there, mm. whether it be in my relationship with my kids or relationship with my spouse. I'm like, wow, why did that work? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, did I just pause a little bit more? And then through that, did they get to see God? Which is, I think, the point of this verse today, Ephesians 6, 4. It's like, it's not about provoking, it's about the Lord, mm. right? It's about them seeing the Lord and Him through us and our activity. And I think if we just remember that principle, that would be good enough on strategic yeah, parenting. Seriously. It's like, let your kids see God through you in huh. each and every moment. Yeah. And that would be good enough because regardless of the role we play, it really, it's about giving God glory in and through us. So thanks for, thanks for sharing in yeah, such a meaningful absolutely. way. I yeah. think it's really good to hear that. And guys, you know, wherever you are today, wherever your kids have been, whatever, uh, you've done or haven't done in your parenting approach, don't worry about it, right? Um, don't dwell on it because God is full of grace and mercy and he loves you and your, your first parent is him. And God is about parenting everybody, including right. us. And if we can experience his perfect love, that will fuel our lives regardless of our regrets or hangups or hurts of the past. God wants to redeem those. But today, if you are a father and you have an opportunity to father someone, do it well and do it in the name of the Lord. So we'll see you back here next time on another edition of the 20 Minute Bible Study.